So, intelligence, the word as such, is used in different ways, isn't it? Um, intelligence officer was the person who had all the information. <laughs> to be intelligent at school means that this individual furnished with the same knowledge can use it more effectively and more efficiently than some other people. Some people are more intelligent than others. Clearly, a certain level of intelligence is not universal in the trivial sense of everybody having the same intelligence ability. And we're not even clear that intelligence That, well, that there's different types of intelligence, perhaps. Some people have an intelligence that's extremely good with um, numbers or words or um, hands-on doing things. Others have an amazing analytical type of intelligence. Some, the intelligence seems to be more of an ability to draw on certain memories much more effectively than others and probably have a much better memory as well. So in that sense, intelligence could be of type and clearly seems to be of degree, in which case, well, we're back to the divine, aren't we? The extreme of an astonishing ability of intelligent ability is presumably God, assuming God exists. We couldn't, for instance, say, well, yes, I do believe in God, but my particular God has no intelligence at all. That's not one of the things I value. <laughs> you just say, oh. <laughs> No intelligence. I'm just trying to think how a person behaves with no intelligence at all. Hmm. Not good. Do you mean wisdom? Ah. Yes, some people don't seem very wise, do they? And some or at least have a reputation for being extremely wise. And of course we would think, God, oh well, we describe to him all wisdom, and religions do, I mean, Hebrew religion, um, the wisdom of man is his foolishness with God. <laughs> that puts us in our place, doesn't it? <laughs> You don't have to spend long on this subject to realise it's not universal intelligence that grabs one. What really takes centre stage is divine wisdom. Is there such a thing? And if there is, how is it to be attained? Ostensibly clearing the mind of thought seems to be going in the wrong direction. Barring a miracle that God exists and puts in your mind what you're looking for. Hmm. Well, good luck to that. <laughs> it's what you'd say from a Western cynical point of view. Why on earth should that happen? And your replies, well, hmm. that's just worldliness. And suddenly you realise that you're trying to defend uh, a very extreme view of the divine, a very personal, and might I say, 
interventionist, loving view of the... You believe in miracles, man. You know, if you're going to think in terms of universal intelligence, and that perhaps religiously you could receive it through emptying the mind, you're believing in a very particular type of supernatural experience that reliably then puts divine wisdom in your mind instead of anything else. It's a bit like the assumption behind reincarnation. If you're a Hindu, well, in some sense you've got a noble God behind it who's produced a system that is just. But if you're a Buddhist, and I do mean a practicing religious Buddhist, and probably not the Buddha himself, but if you're a Buddhist, in the normal expectation of such, you would say, well, where's this? Why should such a just system exist? But then, of course, you ask the Buddhist and you say, well, what's your theory of the existence of the universe? Oh, it's simply cycles. It's always been there. It's eternal. There is no cause. Causes, what is, is simply the res result of causes and conditions from time immemorial. And far beyond that. In fact, infinitely beyond that. It's always been. And of course, the Buddha comes up with the obvious look. Don't worry yourself about understanding these crazy problems from your point of view. Do what I tell you, and you'll gain enlightenment. <laughs> this doesn't commend itself to the usual practice of intelligent people, of course. They don't just follow like sheep. Unless they understand the validity of what's being asked. Or suggested, advised. Well, as you can see, I don't, I'm not terribly impressed by religion. I mean, I think it's, in many ways, the secular, non-religious world does better as regards satisfactory explanations and standard of living. <laughs> um, I'm not sure whether secular people are less happy than religious. Um, Some religious people are rather wonderful, I do agree. Um, majorly, though, religions do not follow the founder. Um, And I think Buddhism may be a classic case of the Buddha hadn't given up the notion of God and the divine, but the religion did. Jesus didn't tell you to worship him, but the religion does. Krishna and Arjuna were meant to be an illustrative religious story. Do 
just like um, the Christian Gospels. But the religions have made it into history. And it looks far more like historicity. Because it doesn't look pl plausible. in large measure to modern people who have experienced the cultures of their society whether it's east or west and when all said and done most people are not devoted the God of the religion. Or religions of their society. They're devoted to what they value most. Which might be, of course, much of the transitory. probably because living is transitory in nature. You know, we don't stay as a child long, we don't stay as a teenager long, we don't have married life forever, we don't have kids forever. Life doesn't stay with us forever. We don't have much experience of the eternal in the universe of the transitory. It's a fond... conception of the imagination from our experience point of view. Thank you, Dad.